Hey, good to see you. Thank you for being here this morning on this wet and cold Tuesday morning, just when we think we're ready for spring. We sort of go backwards a little bit, but um, hope that you are staying well right now. This is that time in the year where I know lots of things are coming your way, right? Campus is busy. You've got social things that are happening. You've got school projects that are coming, tests that are on the horizon. And so I want to remind you again of why we do this every week, why we come into this space every week, why we follow a rhythm every week. We want you to have a space in your life that you know what to expect, which is why we always come together. We always share some announcements. We hear a word of scripture together. We pray together. We hear a word from one of our community members together that in the midst of all of the, the hectic busyness of your lives, I hope that this is a space that you know what's happening, you can trust, and it is a, a, a space of quiet and of reflection for you. I hope that that's what this space can be for you, even this morning as we get to hear a word from uh, the, the book of Lamentations from um, one of our community members here in just a moment. I want to make you aware of a few things here as we get started this morning, but before we do that, as is our custom, I want you to take just a couple of seconds to turn to the people around you. You may have to go out of your way a little bit, but to find the folks in your vicinity, to look them in the eye and say, it's good to see you. It doesn't take quite as long to, to pass the peace this morning. There aren't as many of us in the room. So like I said, I want, I want to make you aware of a few things that are happening um, on our campus, in our world right now. First, and you would have seen some of this in the, the pre-gathering slides and have you heard, but our office is hiring some interns right now. just want to take a brief second to lift that up for you. If, they, if you're interested in helping create opportunities for your peers to encounter God, be formed by the Spirit, and embody Christ-like character, we would love to have you join our student intern team. We've had four really wonderful interns throughout this spring semester. Semester, and we are looking forward to bringing on a few more folks to our team as we look towards the fall. So if that's something that you are interested in, uh, you can apply by the end of the week for that position. And then the other thing that's coming our way next week is Holy Week. And maybe that's a, a term that's unfamiliar to you, but it is a week that all of, of the Christian world takes to reflect on and to follow Jesus through his life, death, and resurrection as we prepare for Easter Sunday. And so we've got all sorts of opportunities next week for you to participate in that journey, to participate in Holy Week. And I wanna make you aware of some of those things so that you can join in this unique opportunity as we join with Christians all over the world to reflect and remember together. And, and there are some opportunities that are available at specific times on specific days, and then there are other opportunities that are available to you all throughout the week. And I just want to highlight a few of those, starting with Monday night at 6.30 p.m. in Ward Hall, where Human Docs will be showing a film, Jacinta, that's about trauma and inherited cycles of addiction and incarceration, that is simply meant to remind us, as Holy Week reminds us each year, that the, the brokenness of the world God didn't turn away from. But God entered into that brokenness through Jesus. We'll be reminded of that as we view the film Jacinta on Monday night. Tuesday, uh, this very same time in the gathering, Dr. Terry Briley, who has been an Old Testament professor for 37 years, is going to be with us and will be interviewed, talking about the ways that Jesus, the life of Christ, is foreshadowed in some of the Old Testament prophets. On Wednesday night, there's a worship night that's led by several student organizations and clubs from across campus, all coming together to create a worship night together. Thursday, there's a service opportunity with an organization called Shower the People that's led by one of our wonderful interns, Annika Gilbert. Shower the People provides access to shower and laundry services to Nashville's unhoused community. So you can come and help us check in guests 
or hand out supplies or just spend time with guests. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure that you snap that QR code to sign up for one of the times that's available, one of the time slots. And then on Friday, we have this really beautiful annual tradition as part of our community. Friday, uh, next Friday in Collins Auditorium at 11 a.m., 11 o'clock classes will be canceled all over campus and we'll hold our Good Friday service that will feature Sanctuary, the Gospel Choir, Avalon Trio. Uh, We'll have some students uh, reading and praying. We'll have a time of communion together. It's a really beautiful time to be together. And then as I said, there are all sorts of activities available to you throughout the week as well. We'll have Stations at the Cross set up, an opportunity for you to reflect and pray in the atrium of the library. Again, an opportunity for you just to journey to the cross through images and artwork. There will be a guided audio reflection that's published for you to use that you can listen to while maybe you go to Radnor Lake and you walk around the lake and you take a hike, or maybe you're just walking around campus but this will be a podcast style audio reflection for you to listen to and engage with. Ezel Chapel has been reserved all week long as a quiet place for reflection and prayer, except for just a few hours in the week, that space will be available to you all week long. And there will also be a short selection of written reflections and devotionals that are published that have been written by some of your classmates and will be made available to you starting next week. So that's a lot of stuff. Don't worry, you're gonna get an email with all sorts of details on Friday. So be looking for that and and engage. Take this opportunity to join with our whole community as we journey to the cross. This morning, uh, here just a moment, as always, Mr. Grant Hitchcock, your SGA president, is going to come up and give you some updates on things that are happening on our campus. So grateful for Grant and the work of his team. After that, we'll have a scripture reading and a prayer by a few of your peers. First, Lauren Scott will read our scripture this morning. Lauren is a senior biomedical physics major. She also uh, is the team director for our campus's chapter of Delight Ministries and is an RA in the village. After that, Paul Burdett will say our prayer. Paul is a senior mechanical engineering major uh, who helps lead BUD ministries and men's ministry on our campus and is also an RA in high rise. And then after that, we'll be joined on stage by Dr. David Holmes. Dr. Holmes is the dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences here at Lipscomb, is a uh, such a wonderful member of our community and has a word to offer us from uh, the narrative of Lamentations this morning. And then I'll hop up and send us on our way this morning. Thanks for being with us this morning. Join me in welcoming Grant to the stage for some announcements. Good morning. Okay, to start off, I have an announcement from IT. Multi-factor authentication is coming on Wednesday, April the 13th for all student accounts to make sure that your account is more secure. And it will be required that you use multi-factor authentication for you to access your account starting the morning of April the 13th. You can go ahead and set up these authentic, authentic, oh my gosh, authentication methods ahead of time to get ready for the, cha- the change. Instructions can be found in Have You Heard and across campus on flyers. And if you struggle setting up multi-factor authentication, you can contact the help desk and they can help you get it set up. So once again, that will start April the 13th in order to access your accounts. Today is election day for SGA. If you have not checked your emails yet, The polls opened at 8 a.m. this morning and they will not close until 4 p.m. If for some reason you did not receive an email to vote, you can contact me, Grace Davis, or you can go by the Student Life office to get that figured out. We promised that there would be retro snow if you voted, but we did not think that a rainy day was the best day to make you wait outside in line for a snow cone. So we've decided to push that off to next Thursday. Retro snow will be here next Thursday, April the 14th, from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. So if you screenshot your receipt from voting, you can go next week and get your retro snow on a sunny day. Um, And finally, there will be a softball game this Wednesday at 5 p.m. And then there will also be baseball and softball games this weekend. Thank you. (laughs) 
Today's scripture reading is from Lamentations 3, 19 through 24. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. Good morning. Please bow with me as we join in prayer. Dear Father, thank you for this day and the time we have now to share together in community. We humbly ask your blessing upon our time here and that you would move among us. As we begin the last month of the spring semester, I pray that you will give us strength and focus in our classes and activities so that we may finish well. For those of us who are seniors about to graduate, I ask that you would guide us as we move forward to the next chapter of our lives. Guide us to the places and jobs that you have planned for each of us, and help us not to rely on our own knowledge and the plans we've made for ourselves, but to fully lean on you and trust in your plans for us. Thank you for your steadfastness and faithfulness towards us, even though we are so unworthy of your love. Help us to show that love to those around us every day as we seek to model Jesus. And finally, thank you for the blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day. Help us to continually draw our identity from who you say we are, your sons and daughters, image bearers of the kingdom. Thank you for the sacrifice of your son and the salvation and eternal hope that we have because of Jesus. Help us to live every day for you, as you are our hope and joy. We pray these things in your name, amen. Please join me in welcoming Dr. David Holmes. Good morning. It is great to see you all this morning. I want to tell you a secret that I haven't told anybody in public yet, and I have to just get this out. It's good to, confession's good for the soul. I have two sweethearts, and you're gonna see images of them in a second. The first sweetheart is my wife of 35 years, almost 35 years, if we can show the image of Veronica, 35 years, right? But that's not my only sweetheart, and this is where the confession part comes in. I have another sweetheart, and that's the next image, and that's my granddaughter. I have love from them and love for them. And their love gives me a sense of, of joy and a sense of purpose. But I gotta tell you, as much as I love and am in love with the two of them, there is a love that is far, far greater. And that's what we'll see in the next image. That's the image of God's love. But God's love is great because not only does it give us true joy and not just happiness, not only because it gives us purpose, but God's love is important because it will sustain us through difficult times. Even those times when we question God, why is this happening to me? Why did my team lose in the basketball tournament, right? Even we ask those questions, but there are deeper questions to ask still as we see in the next image. Devastation. Lamentations is all about the devastation that takes place. Can you say Ukraine? Can you remember what is going on in Lamentations that Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians turned the, uh, uh, the children of Israel's home inside out and upside down? And can you just imagine what folks then and what folks now feel when they are experiencing chronic homelessness, destruction, and disruption? And so the first question we want to ask is why? But that's not the question that is asked here. The question is not why. In fact, rabbis believe, many rabbis believe that lamentation should not be answering the question why, but how. How do you sustain yourself through difficult moments and difficult times? And very quickly, we will just give you a sketch of what that is. How do I make it through those difficult times, whether they're minor things, like what you're struggling with towards the end of the semester, and those struggles are real, or whether they're major things, relationship and family breakups and things of that sort. The text reveals 
the directions and perspectives we should have. Number one, if you look at that, we should look upward. We should look upward to the unchanging character of God. His character is unchanging. And, and this is what uh, Jeremiah and the others had to hold on to in difficult times. And this is what you have to hold on to. How is he unchanging? Well, first of all, he's unchanging in terms of steadfast love. And here when we talk about steadfast love, we are talking about a love that is qualitatively and quantitatively better than anything you ever had. It is deep and wide. If, if I were to use uh, an illustration from R&B, some of you guys know what rhythm and blues are, they're the best music, by the way. If I were gonna use that illustration, I would say in terms of the love of God and forgive the broken grammar, there ain't no mountain high enough there is no river wide enough, and there is no valley deep enough to separate us from the love of God. That's the greatness there. That's greatness in terms of that love, in terms of his faithfulness, which here simply means that he is always there for us. As things change, he remains the same. But not only do we look upward, the next thing we have to recognize is that we look inward. God is unchanging by definition. God is love by definition. God is the only one who's consistent. Listen, and who he is and what he does. But I need to change. The more I think I have my life together, the more I realize how broken I am, the more I realize that I need to get it together and only God can help me do that. But how do I look inward? How were the people in Lamentations turned to look inward at a difficult time? Well, very quickly, they were turned to, told to remember. Remember who God is and what he has done. And the same God, the message in Lamentations, is the same God who delivered the children of Israel from Egyptian slavery and brought them to the promised land. That is the same God that can give them a sense of encouragement now. You know, even if you haven't been through anything hugely tragic, I think I have some people in here who, has, who have experienced God delivering them from something. I think I have some people here who have experienced a God who has delivered them from some form of heartbreak or breakup with that person you thought was going to be the love of your life. So we can remember, but we also need to repent. We need to repent and make sure that we are changing our minds about the way we deal with big sins and little sins in our lives, those unkindnesses that all of us have to apologize for. Remember, repent, and the good news is then you're restored. I serve a God who can restore you no matter what your baggage is, no matter what your background is, no matter what you've done wrong. And if you don't get excited about anything else, get excited about that potential for God to restore you. It may be one of these days, I don't know if it's going to happen, the Lakers May win the championship again someday. I don't think it's going to happen, right? So it's restoration for everyone. And then finally, not only look upward, look outward, look inward, but look outward because there's some people who are going to need you. Truly loving your neighbor says that I'm going to reach to the margins, wherever those margins are, and I'm going to lift those people up. All of us know people who are struggling more than we are. All of us know people who feel less of a sense of belonging than we do. Those are the people you reach out to. On yesterday, we commemorated the death of a great American, Martin Luther King Jr. And very quickly, he exemplified all of what I'm talking about here in his letter from a Birmingham jail. The scene was a group of people who didn't want blacks to be included in the citizen's life of Birmingham 1963. And there were actually some people who really wanted blacks to progress, but at a slower pace. King vehemently disagreed with him. And that's the challenge of the prophets, right? God will always challenge us, even as he comforts us. But this is what I want you to notice about King, if you look at the next slide. In that letter, he recognizes a co common humanity. Uh, e e even though he disagrees with these folks fiercely, he recognizes that they are people of goodwill and that they were sincere in their criticisms. I, I know my time is almost up, but I've got to tell you, God help us if we can't realize that across race, across politics, across all of these divides, we serve a God who says we can still respect and love one another. And that's what we're looking for. He recognized that as a common humanity. But the next slide, 
He also recognizes common heritage. We have to have a vocabulary where we can talk to each other. I know some of you may not like American history. Hopefully everyone loves the Bible. But King called upon the Bible primarily, but American history and philosophy and theology to say this, there, are, there is some potential in the language that we use, in the books that we read, to make us better people. Yes, none of these things might be perfect. The Constitution, the Declaration of Independence may not be perfect. What has been done historically against some groups may not be perfect, but King recognized this. There was promise and potential in the founding documents. And our job was to live up to those standards. A common heritage, but finally, a common hope, and this is where we'll end. The common hope for King was that we would come together recognizing that this nation has the potential to be inclusive, even as the history says, and even to some degree now is as exclusive. It has the potential to be inclusive. But our resurrection, our hope, and they're getting a little taste of, of black preaching here. I hope you uh, don't mind this. Our hope is on in God, the resurrected God. We believe in our founding documents, but our hope is in God. If you say amen, I'll get finished faster. Uh, we, believe, we believe in, uh, in our, our heritage and literature, but if we hold on to God, we understand our hope is in him, which is why Isaiah would say, those that wait upon the Lord, will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and faint not. That's the kind of God we serve. Notice the order. I always heard that you should be able to, to uh, crawl before you walk and then you run. But he says those that wait on the Lord shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and faint not. Steady love, there's the most steady love that we can talk about. The love that comes from God that steadies you in the most difficult times. God bless you. Thank you to Dr. Holmes for that good word this morning. Um, may you leave today, may you be embraced by the steady, steadfast, faithful love of our good God. Thank you, Dr. Holmes, for reminding us of that this morning. Be well, stay dry, have a wonderful rest of your week. We will see you same time, same place next week. Be blessed.